All right, welcome everybody to our Design Innovation Month webinar, where we're going to be talking today about getting started with the 3D Experience platform. So I just want to start with some housekeeping items. My name is Jordan Puentes. I will be the host today. I am based out of our Portland, Oregon office, and I'm an applications engineer on the SolidWorks side. So just the housekeeping items that we're going to go over. I have muted everybody on entry. Uh, we do that because we are going to be recording this webinar and posting it on our CATI YouTube channel. So go ahead and check out our YouTube channel. We have all of these webcasts up there. Um, our Design Innovation Month webcast, we try to host two of them a day. So this is going to be the first one for today, our inflow, getting started with 3D Experience. So today your presenter is going to be Kyle Elias. He is out of our Buffalo Grove office and he is a PLM application engineer. So with that, I will pass it off to you, Kyle. All right. Thanks, Jordan, for that intro. Uh, how's everyone doing? Hope everyone's doing all right. Um, if you have any questions, just please stop us at any point in time. But uh, if not, we're just going to go ahead and get started. Um, as you may know, the platform is pretty new. It has been getting a lot of uh, hype the last couple of months, and it, it'll only grow in the future. So um, let's just go ahead and see what it is all about. So one of the questions that I get uh, most of the time here is why move to the cloud? And um, the best way that I've found to explain that is to kind of try to investigate what we're doing today versus what the cloud has to offer. So today we are pretty much using many different applications to go about our daily life. Um, just Microsoft Office 365 alone has more than 15 different apps. Um, we also use different things like Smartsheet or GrabCAD, maybe Trello, maybe some communication app. And all of these require large IT infrastructure. They also require a large IT overhead. And all of these, or many of these, are subscription services, so they're paid services. And the most important thing of all is they don't really communicate really well with each other. It's, it requires a lot of manual labor if you want one of the apps to kind of communicate with one another or just transfer information across is fairly difficult. So this is how we do things today versus what the platform is presenting us with. The platform is meant to be that one-stop shop. So it would be that one subscription service where you can, you know, go use it and leverage its resources to go about your daily life. It doesn't require any IT infrastructure, it, and it doesn't require any IT overhead because everything is on the cloud. So as long as you have a computer with access to the internet, you can get into the platform. And I think the most important part of all is that these apps are integrated with each other. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but uh, the platform is based on Enovia, and, uh, or it's derived from Enovia, I should say. Uh, so many of the apps that exist there are from, uh, come from experience and, and things that people are using today. And we'll see here in a bit uh, how everything is integrated with each other. I wanted to show these to you guys. Do you see any similarities here? You see Amazon, YouTube, Facebook, Netflix, even Google Docs. All these are platforms, and they are platforms that we use today and we're comfortable with and we're not afraid of. So just giving you a perspective of what a platform really is and if it, it isn't something we should be afraid of of course all of these will run inside a web browser so as long as you have access to the internet and um, a computer you can get into any of those platforms some of these like google docs for example might be even considered a collaborative platform just like 3d experience so we're using these things today and we might not even realize it but it's something that's common and that's definitely the direction we're going in the future. Next, uh, we're going to talk about where the cloud lives. Uh, that's a question that I get to uh, all of the time. Where, where is my data going to live if I migrate to the cloud? And the answer to that is it's everywhere. I mean, the Sol today has currently um, 11 data centers throughout the globe, and that list is only going to grow. Of course, if you're a North America customer, your data is most likely going to live in the West or East Coast servers. So now let's transition out of, you know, 
the general topics and start talking a little bit more about the platform and what it really is. The platform is separated in quadrants, um, and the SO has created a navigation wheel to kind of help us with the available applications and everything that's available today. So here is a bit of the wheel and how it works. The wheel is divided, into, like I said, in four quadrants. It has the north, the south, the east, and the west. The north is the social collaboration services. So in the north live applications um, that are meant for your social collaboration. So they are meant for you to kind of communicate internally with your peers and just work together um, throughout your day. The south is the simulation services. If you purchase the simulation role, then that's where you see some of the apps that are available for that. So the cloud run, uh, runs on Simulia, which is a pretty powerful competitor to Ensys, if you guys know that. Um, it has a lot of capabilities, some nonlinear analysis, thermal analysis, and of course, finite element analysis. The east is the industry innovation services. So that's where uh, apps that allow you to kind of communicate to the outside world, so to your industry, so maybe peers in another company. So it just allows you that communication, that uh, back and forth collaboration with your industry. And the West is, of course, the 3D modeling services. So here is where you would find applications such as 3D Creator or X Design, or even your SOLIDWORKS connector lives here, and maybe some converters, if you have them available to you, would also live here on this side of the wheel. So here's a little bit more detail of the applications that live on the north side of the wheel. Of course, I'm not going to go to them one by one, and we don't expect you to memorize all of them. But uh, it just gives you an idea of what's available today. So we have the collaboration center, we have bookmarks, tasks, so things that you use on your daily basis to kind of go about your tasks. South is, like we said, the simulation part of the wheel. So all the apps that are related to simulation, um, you can launch simulations, review simulations, and everything related to analysis here on the south side of the wheel. The east is your industry innovation services. It's, it's related to things that may be outside your company or outside of your industry. So it kind of allows you that communication with the outside world, has some notes, some web links, and your mail. So all things that may live inside our side of the platform. And finally, the west is your 3D you know, area, X design, X shape, your SOLIDWORKS connector, all would live in this side of the wheel. So a quick note that I've been saying to people is something that we get, have to get in our minds. Applications are not for sale. So nobody can come to us or go to the soul and order applications. That's not available. What is available today are roles. So what you have to do is you kind of have to work with us and kind of explain to us what you're trying to do and then us, being your um, trusted advisor, would be able to kind of uh, make sure that you're grabbing the right roles that make sense to you. So a role would have a set of applications that it uh, gives you access to. So just a little bit more detail on that, what is available today. We have currently 17 roles available. So it's kind of hard um, just memorizing all of them. So we really have to work together to kind of try to understand what people are up to, and then we can propose them roles that would make sense for their specific needs. We got to keep in mind the platform is highly customizable. So it, it really takes that conversation to make sure, you know, we're proposing roles that would make sense. If you want tasks, we would probably give you a certain role. If you want just a 3D connector to SOLIDWORKS, we'd probably give you another one and, and things of that nature. You also see here that we have computing credit packs and extended storage. So the credit packs for computing are with regards to simulation. So if you need to run a lot of simulation on the cloud, maybe you would want to buy a computing credit pack if your role doesn't already have them available. So that's just something to keep in mind. And of course, extended storage. If you want out of storage, you can always get more. So transitioning into what really the platform really is, when you get it, 
it's a blank space. There's nothing in it. And the way that it helped me understand that is when you buy a cell phone, for example, and its initial home screen, not nowadays, but in the past, it used to be blank, right? You'd get a cell phone and then that screen has nothing in it. You'd have to kind of go to the store and download the applications that make sense to you. The platform works very much like in the same way. So you would kind of get something that's blank. You can see here, this is my first time logging in. And I would have to click on that wheel and download the apps, or not download, but at least pick the ones that are that make sense to me that are gonna help me throughout my day. And then I'll place those apps on my platform or on my dashboard. So it's highly customizable to each individual, and you can pick the app that makes sense to you, and if you have one that doesn't, all you have to do is just not use it. So, of course, once you start placing applications on the platform, things can get a little bit cumbersome if you have five, six apps on the same screen. So in order to solve that, we have different tabs. So each one of the tabs would have a set of applications that are available to us. So for instance, we can have a project planning tab, we can have a 3D drive tab and things of that nature. That would just allow us to organize our applications in a way that makes sense and in a way that we don't have 10 different apps on the same screen. That would be very hard to read. So next, I'm just gonna transition here to our actual 3D experience platform and we're gonna start you know, creating a dashboard and seeing how that is done. So here we're going to log into the platform. And of course, I have prepared a blank uh, dashboard for us. So the first time you log in, this is probably what you would see. So in order to start going, all we have to do is, you know, find the apps that make sense to us. So let's just go ahead and create a home page here. And in this home page, we're going to place a couple of different apps. First one being a WebNote app. So our web notes just allow us to grab notes from the web and quickly create them. We're also going to place the metrics reader as I personally think that's a good app to have on my homepage. It just allows me to read metrics um, from my company or, or organization. And finally, we're gonna put this web page reader over here. As you can see, they don't look very nice. So in order to fix that, we can hit that down arrow and hit fit. And what that does, this fits everything to our dashboard nicely for us. So in order to start uh, configuring some of these, you just kind of follow the screen prompts. For the metrics, we can choose to open an uh, Excel file, and the metrics app will keep track of that file for us. Or in this case, I'm just gonna read or use some predetermined data over here to create a, uh, just a metric for me to, that is easy to read. I'll call this sales metrics. Once I hit finish, that creates that nice little graph for me. And of course, this data is not tied to that uh, data that I just posted. You can have an Excel sheet uh, loaded into this and it'll keep track of that data for you as well. Web notes, uh, there's not much explaining there. It's just say hello. I'm just gonna say this is my first note ever. Just like that, I created some notes and I can leave it there, reference it if I use it. And of course here is my web page reader. I can have any web page that I like and it'll keep track of that for me and then like what I put. You get the sense of it. You can kind of place the website here. Maybe let's go and flow, flow dash deck. So 
Let's grab info website and try that. So there you go. So that page reader just kind of reads that page for us. You can have our news here or whatever makes sense to us. Uh, before, you, before going further, I'm just going to show you guys the management side of the platform and how that is done. So in order to, if you have admins rights, you would have this platform management tool over here. And that allows you to manage everything that is about the platform. So in the beginning, you're going to have this My Platform app here, and that just gives you a snapshot of your platform and everything in it. You can see how many members, roles, and how much of your storage is being used. On the Members tab, this is where you would configure your members and give them access to different roles. So I'm just going to wait for the members to load over here, and I'll show you guys how easy it is to kind of add a role to a person. So here we are. Here are all of our members, and if I click on that little information icon, you can see that here are all the roles that this person has. And of course, I can give and take access to any of those roles as an admin of the platform. A secondary way to do that would be to kind of drag that person and drag it to a role, and that would give them access to whatever role you drag them into. So it's fairly easy to kind of set things up and set which person has access to what role. Next, I'll quickly show you guys this content tab. The content is where you pretty much configure everything there is to configure about the platform. Here, you can add things like your naming rules. So if your drawings have a certain name or a certain rule that they have to follow with regards to naming, you can add that rule here. Also, your revision schemes are configured here. And of course, your access rules are configured here. So if you want, basically, some people to have access to CAD file and some other people that shouldn't have access to CAD file, this is where you kind of pick and choose the rules related to that. Also here is where, where we would configure a life cycle. So for instance, if any of you guys have used SolidWorks PDM before, life cycle is very similar to a workflow inside of SolidWorks PDM. So in here is where we would configure that life cycle and you know making sure that it follows or it at least is similar to something that we do today. Also, and the platform management tool is the communities tab. And in here is where you'd create your communities and things that uh, these are meant for collaboration internally and externally. So for example, if any of you guys have used Microsoft Teams today, the community looks and feels very similar to that. It's that conversational history that allows you to share files, post ideas, and talk to others that are in that community and uh, that will allow that collaboration in that way. So you can see that these are all the communities we have. We can you know, view some statistics and manage some settings. And this would just give us an idea of what people are up to inside of our communities. Finally, um, I'll show you guys this dashboard tool. Here is where you'd set up, for example, a starter dashboard. So if I'd say, I want this pre-sales dashboard to be my starter dashboard. All I'd have to do is come in here and set this as a starter. And the first time I log in, this is what would be available to me. So enough of management. I'm just going to go back and uh, keep creating my um, homepage here, keep creating my dashboard and things, the things that make sense to me. Next, I'm going to create a community dashboard. Like I said, community. It's similar to Microsoft Teams, so it allows you that conversational history. So we're going to grab this 3D Swim app, which gives me access to the communities. And here is where you'd see your communities and what people are up to in it. 
you can also see, you know, create a post, maybe create a different wiki, a different survey. So this just allows you that internal communication with your peers and your peers are um, always, you know, configured over there and you can add them or subtract them as you need. All right, next we're gonna add a project planner. I really like this app. I believe it's useful to me. And I also believe that many people could use it as well. So in order to add the project planner app, we're just gonna go to the north side of the wheel and we're gonna grab that project planning. There it is. So the project planning uh, is task-based. So for instance, it will give you things like milestones, things that are at risk, and it gives you some snapshot of your project. And this is all based on your tasks that are on the tasks tab. So you know, based on things that are completed and to do it in progress, it kind of figures out those graphs for you and lets you keep track of the project for you as well. You can also see it in a nice, um, schedule here. You can see we can add things like milestones or tasks and they just keep track of that Gantt chart for us fairly easily. Of course we can add members to our projects so different people can communicate and use it and of course add content to our project so a Word sheet, an Excel spreadsheet, whatever the case may be. We'll create a couple more. Uh, just to give you guys an idea, you know, what the platform really is. Next, we're going to do collaborative tasks. And in this one, we're of course going to put collaborative tasks, which lives on the north side of the wheel. And we might as well just put a product explorer here. So as you guys can see, it's fairly easy to kind of go to the wheel and grab applications that uh, will make your life a little bit easier or make sense to you. So then once you have this, you can see that now we have tasks and we can kind of use these tasks, use things that are attached to them to kind of view things that make sense to us. So enough of me doing the same thing again and again. I'm just going to show you guys uh, the platform that I have uh, configured for myself. And you can see I have a bunch of tabs with things that make sense to me. And very quickly, 3D space is where all your files live. This is where everything that you put in the platform will live. So your parts, your documentation, everything is here. This is basically the cloud. And I have set it up in this way with the bookmarks here because I can easily grab something and throw it in there and bookmark it so it's easy for me to use it in the future. And I can, of course, grab this and drag it into this 3D play and see what that is all about. So it just allows me some quick visualization of everything that the platform has and maybe something that I'm looking for. I'll show you this guy, the compare app really quickly here before transitioning to SOLIDWORKS, and then I'll give you a final snapshot of what that looks like. So let's say, for instance, I want to compare this. Let's attempt to compare these two files. So the way that this works, it kind of creates a little list and that I can download and see the difference between these two parts. Uh, let me try a different one here and see what happens. Yeah, maybe I grabbed the wrong file, but if it was working right, the way it would work is it would kind of give us a preview with a CAD file of the differences between the two. All right. So 
inside of ThoughtWorks, um, this is what you would see. It's the, basically the same access that you have in the platform. And in here, you can use things like your tasks to grab files that are important to you. So right from inside of SolidWorks, you can use the platform and grab things that make sense to you. As you can see here, I can use this task, and if it had any attachments to it, I can kind of grab that attachment and throw it right into SolidWorks for myself. So it just allows me to um, very easily uh, work from inside of SolidWorks. Also from here, I can do things like seeing my 3D space, seeing collaboration. So it just, we have another webinar coming up next week, which is more of a day in the life. And uh, in that, I'll kind of show how to create tasks and how to use SolidWorks to connect to the platform. So that's a little bit more hands-on. Uh, our webinar today is just, you know, showing you guys what the platform is, what roles are, how to add people, and, and that's the very initial beginning of what your day or your life and platform would be. So with that, I'm just going to revert back here to my presentation. So in order to close this out, just a quick summary for us. Uh, we talked about today what platforms are all about. We briefly talked about the wheel and how it's set up in that north side, east and west, and how uh, each application is placed in each one of those quadrants. We also showed you guys what our roles were, apps. We started creating a dashboard and kind of went through how to put applications in it, how to add a tab. So this is the very initial beginning of your life if you were to uh, be inside the platform. We also reviewed how to create role users and assign roles. So I just wanted to thank everybody for your time. And uh, I'm looking forward to what comes next. If you guys are interested, I do have another webinar coming up. Um, just ask us about it, and we can uh, tell you uh, when it is, how to get signed up, and things like that. So just thank you. And uh, Jordan, I don't know if you had something to add, but I uh, just want to thank everybody for being here today.